John Gill, Philemon, verse 19. Scripture, quote, I, Paul, have written it with my own hand, unquote. John Gill, quote, meaning either this epistle, which being short, he used no writer, he wrote it himself, and which might be taken as an engagement to do what he promised, or else a bill, a promissory note, written with his own hand, which he sent along with an isthmus, by which he laid himself upon and under obligation to give Philemon full satisfaction in everything in which he had been injured by a servant adding, Scripture quote, I will repay it, unquote. This was not an ironical expression, nor a piece of vanity in the apostle. He spoke seriously and heartily, and meant what he said, and though his circumstances were often so mean that he was forced to work with his own hands to minister to his necessities, Yet such was his interest in the churches, and such their obligation to him, on account of his personal and useful ministration to them, that he could easily raise a sum of money among them upon any emergence occasion, so that Philemon had a good surety and paymaster of the apostle. And this shows his great humility to be a bondsman for a servant, and to make good damages and debts brought on in a scandalous manner, as also that suretyship in some cases is lawful, though it ought to be cautiously and for very good reason entered into, and this engagement of the apostle for Onesimus bears some resemblance with, and may serve to illustrate the suretyship of Christ for his people, they and Onesimus being much in a like condition as he was an unprofitable and runaway servant, so they are all gone out of the way and together become unprofitable. And Christ engaged with his Father to bring them back again and set them before him. And by his sufferings and death has brought them nigh, which were far off, as he had wronged his master and was indebted to him, so that he have injured the law of God, affronted his justice, and cured his displeasure, and having owed to him more than 10,000 talents, and having nothing to pay, Christ engaged to satisfy law and justice, to make reconciliation for them, and pay all their debts, all of which he has accordingly done. Their sins have been placed on his account, imputed to him, and charged upon him, and he has bore them, and the punishment due to them, and so has satisfied for them and restored that which he took not away. Scripture quote, I'll bet I do not say to thee how thou owest unto me even thine own self besides, unquote. John Gill quote, having respect to his, his conversion, which he was the happy instrument of the apostle, was his spiritual father, and he was his son. According to the common faith, he had been the instrument of saving his soul from death. He had been the means of that in the hand of God, with all his riches and the riches of his friends and relations, could never have procured. The salvation of his soul, his better part, was instrumentality owing to him, and so his whole self, and therefore, what favor might he not ask of him, and what was it he could, or should deny him? This the apostle introduced in a very artificial way, and does not insist upon it, but suggests that should he forgive the injuries and debts he had took upon him to make satisfaction for, it would be an equivalent to the debt he owed to him. From hence may be observed how greatly obliged regenerated persons are to those who have been the means and instruments of their conversion. End of Philemon, verse 19.